Hi everyone, so I thought I'd quickly run through some more Mac questions. I know you've got the exam soon. I will try and get a few more done. I just cannot, I find it really hard to get lots of them done like uh, with everything else. I'm afraid I, I'm really busy at the moment. Um, but yeah, okay, um, let's have a look at it though. Like uh, I like, I do enjoy doing these questions. They are great fun uh, and they're tough. You know, I don't think that I find them easy. I definitely don't. <laughs> I definitely don't. And I'd say on this one, I don't think I get full marks on this in exam conditions. I really don't. I think this bit in particular is difficult feels like the kind of question you want to have like an hour or two to think about rather than 20 minutes uh, but there we go <laughs> that's the way it goes um, some of it though is very nice in this question some bits of it are absolutely kind of typical you know of this kind of standard anyway so don't get freaked out by it okay first expand and simplify that now here's a perfect example of something which shouldn't be too weird now i mean i'm just going to times it all by a first and then by minus b you know the key thing is it doesn't really matter how you lay out your working here but just make sure it's nice and clear uh, so if i times everything by a first i get a to the n plus one plus a to the n b a to the n b plus a to the n minus one b squared um plus dot 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 and i'll go right the way down to the other end a squared b to the m minus one plus a b to the m plus right so i've times it all through by a now i'm going to times it all through by minus b so i guess everything's going to become minus actually after this let's make that clear so i'm going to have minus a to the n b try to here's a bit of advice in your algebra always write down the letters in alphabetical order it stops you getting confused it really does it means you don't suddenly see pqr and another term rpq and don't realize it's exactly the same term which you can combine so a little bit of advice there um, i'm timesing everything by b so minus well minus b minus a to the m minus one b squared minus a to the m minus two b cubed i'll put a dot 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 in now and I'll just budge over a little bit. Never got enough space on this board, have I? Um, and then at the end, I'm going to get AB to the N minus, of course, and minus B to the N plus one. Well, what happens here? Do you, do you notice that some of the terms we'd already mentioned, like I've got an A to the N plus one, I've got a minus B to the N plus one, but I've got an A to the N B minus an A to the N B. I've got an A to the N minus one B squared minus A to the N minus one B squared. And at the end, I've got an A squared B to the N minus one. Now, I don't think you can see this term because it's a term prior to this one. So I'm just going to put a line in through that. And then an A, oh no. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll explain in a second. And then uh, I've got a plus A B to the N and a minus a b to the m this term would have cancelled with the one before it it's equivalent to the one just preceding uh you know like it, it would have the one just after this over here next we would have had an a a to the m minus 2 b cubed so that one is indeed going to cancel with that one if you like and you're left with a to the m plus one minus b to the m plus one can i point out as well that this question is even more obvious if you do one of uh, the grids which i'm really am a massive fan of if you write it down like this you get a nice pattern occurring like that if you see what i mean when you do the multiplying out and that's always that's always nice but anyway we've got the final answer so i'm sure they will assume we've done the uh, multiplication correct now what was weird for me about this question is i almost didn't bother referring back to that result apart from sort of in question four where i'd sussed out what it was going on about but uh, you know, and then when I looked at the answers, I realized that my answer in part four, I should have gone straight to this much, much, much earlier. But I didn't really use it in part two or part three and not really in part five either. So it was a bit disappointing that a result at the start, which I proved, didn't prove massively handy. I think that's what I found somewhat off putting in this question. OK, the prime number three has a property. It's one less than a square number. That's true. It's one less than four. Are there any other prime numbers with this property? Justify your answer. Well, let P be a prime. We often use P for prime for obvious reasons, such that P equals, well, let's use, because um, we're used to using N for natural numbers to remind us that it's an N, N squared minus one, where N is a member of the natural numbers. Okay, well, this is one of those situations where I am happy to factorize it, even though it doesn't equal zero, mainly because it equals an integer. And if you've got integer solutions, then you can talk about the factors. And particularly when this is supposed to be a prime, 
it's helpful to have it factorised, isn't it? Because if P is truly a prime, then it's only got two factors, yeah? One and itself. So this implies, this means that n minus 1 must be equal to 1. And therefore, m plus 1 must be equal to p, yeah? But if m minus 1 is equal to 1, oh, I'm sure you can see where I'm going through with this. You probably went through this in a similar way yourself. Well, then n equals 2, and therefore p, well, p is 2 squared minus 1, p equals 3. This is the only possibility, yeah? It's the only possibility. And we can see that because one less than a perfect square is a difference of two squares. And if you've got a difference of two squares, you've got definitely two factors. And because P has to be prime, one of those factors, the smallest one, has to be equal to one. I don't have to check M plus one equal to one because it's the smallest factor which is equal to one. If you do M plus one is equal to one, then you get N equal to zero and P turns out to be minus one, but it's a positive number. So this is only possible. whilst p equals 3, as there are no other, you know, as otherwise the factors of, as otherwise it has factors greater than 1. If you like, it has factors which are less than p, oh, but greater than 1, yeah, um, I'll, I'll put that really badly. <laughs> otherwise it has factors uh, less than itself and greater than 1. And that completes it. Hopefully I've explained myself correctly there or, you know, fully enough to get full marks. I hope so. Um, like I say, I'm not I never guarantee anything with my solutions. I'm not guaranteeing you that they're perfect. Far from it. Expect to find mistakes and even just outright lies uh, in them. But uh, this is my effort at it. Um, OK, part three, find all the prime numbers that are one more than a cube number. Justify your answer. Well, this seems very similar to the last one. All prime numbers that happen to be one more than a cube number. So let P equal N cubed plus 1, where P is prime. Yeah. And then just like we did before, let's try and factorise it. Now, factorising something like X cubed plus 1 is not difficult because we have a lovely theorem, which we teach you in A-level, called factor theorem. Factor theorem says, if I can guess at a number, which when I plug it in for x, it pops out 0, then x minus that number is a factor. And I can have a lovely little guess here at minus 1, because minus 1 cubed is minus 1, plus 1 is 0. And that implies that x plus 1 is a factor of x cubed plus 1. It's the same here. I know straight away that m plus 1 is going to be a factor of that. Now, when I'm trying to work out what times is by that to give this, I use a little grid. I love these little grids. They are great. We need an n squared to make the n cubed. But that also gives me an n squared. And there's no n squared terms in here. So if I put a minus n in there, I get a minus n squared. And they cancel, which is what I want. Now, that also gives me a minus n. But there's no minus n's in there. So I'm going to put a plus 1 here because that will generate an n. And now they cancel. And what's more, I can see I've done it right at the end because I get a plus 1. So in other words, n plus 1 times n squared minus n add 1 is the same as n cubed plus n, and multiply it out by all means. And now I'm going to use a very similar argument to before. Either n plus 1 equals 1, because I can't really see what obviously is the smaller one out of these two factors. I'm going to say either n plus 1 equals 1, but in that case, n is 0 and p is 1, but p is supposed to be prime, so that's no good. Yeah? Nope. <laughs> if you like, um, I'll, I'd probably explain it a bit clearer than that in the exam. Uh, I'd probably just put, but P isn't, but P's, nope, as P is prime. Okay, so maybe N squared, you know, if you like, or either that or N squared minus N plus 1 equals 1. In which case, n squared minus n equals 0. In which case, n times n minus 1 equals 0. In which case, either n is 0 or n equals 1. OK, we get a bit more mileage out of n equals 1 because we get 1 cubed plus 1. We get p equals 2. In other words, there's only one cube number. Uh, sorry, there's only one yeah, cube number which is such that 
uh, when you add one to it, you get a prime number. And that cube number is one. One cubed is one. It's a, it's a really unsatisfying answer, this. <laughs> if you look uh, on my videos, uh, there was a good question on uh, the Mathematical Olympiad for Girls, the MOG. Um, it was the very last question on a paper. Obviously, it's uh, the Mathematical Olympiad, so it's very, very difficult. But it's really similar to this in that it was asking you to find all prime numbers that satisfied a particular equation and they were really small ones and so it was somewhat unsatisfying i felt anyway at the end but um you know you almost want to find a hidden one and then be much happier but there we go okay so this proves this shows us there is only one prime number or only one cube number which, uh, yeah, maybe, uh, which way around shall I put it? How was it put in the question? I forget the question. Um, there is only one prime number that is one more than a cube number. Hey, where have you gone? There's only one prime number which is one larger than a cube number. the prime number two. Interesting result. Cool. Okay, so, so far so good. And then you get the slap in the face that is three to the thousand, 2015 minus two to the 2015. Is this a prime number? Explain your reasoning carefully. Now you might immediately look up here and think, well, surely this is gonna start to play a part soon. Um, and I would totally agree with you. Um, but you might naively think, OK, let A, you know, because I've got, you know, because we already know that this equals, uh, sorry, not three, but A to the M plus one minus B to the M plus one. Remember, we proved that in part one. So you might immediately think, ah, I've got this difference of two powers, two different numbers to the power of the same power. Um, I can use this and I can just let N equal M plus one equal 2015 yeah is this maybe maybe this is a naive approach you took i could completely understand this you can't get everything right can you you know um so n is 2014 so you get 3 minus 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of 2014 plus 3 to the power of 2013 times by 2 um, and so on and so forth um, the trouble with this is Three minus two is one, and this result will therefore equal three to the 2015 minus two to the 2015. It will be the same thing. So it looks like you might deduce from that. Oh, maybe it is prime. You haven't proved it's prime. You've just shown that this is one way to factorize it, and it happens to be one times itself. But it doesn't prove that it's prime, does it? Um, in the end, with this one, and like I said, I wouldn't have got this in test conditions. I don't think because it took me longer than that. Um, what I did was similar to like um, what I was doing here, but with grids, I thought, well, I know 2015 is five times 403, yeah? Then I thought, can I write this using this kind of property where, you know, we subtract it each time? I'll show you what I mean. Um, one second. So I thought, well, I've got like five lots of 403 there. So maybe I should try doing writing it like this. 3 to the 403 minus 2 to the 403, yeah? And I thought, can I multiply this by something to make 3 to the 2015 minus 2 to the 2015? Well, clearly I'm going to have to start with 3 to the 1612 because add those powers, they come to 2015. So it gives me 3 to the 2015. And my idea was I'm going to take away one, then add the other, take away one, then add the other, because this will give me 3 to the 1612 times by 2 to the 403. Oh, I need to get rid of that now. So I need, what do I need? I need a 3 to the 1209 times by 2 to the 403, because then I'll completely cancel that. I'll end up with 3 to the 1612 times 2 to the 403, and they'll cancel. But I'll also get a 3 to the 1209 times by a 2 to the 806. Now that's great because I can just continue this kind of argument each way down and I'm stepping down in multiples of 403 so it's going to go to zero and tie up nice and neat at the end. So I get 3 to the 806 times by 2 to the 806 I think and then that will give me 3 to the 1209 
times 2 to the 806. They cancel now, and I get minus 3 to the 806 times by 2 to 1209. Then I'm going to times that by 3 to the um, 403 this time, times by 2 to the 1209, and that's going to give me 3 to the 806, 2 to 1209, oh, 1209, and they cancel again. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this now. 3 to the 403 times 2 to the 1209. Big powers, eh? <laughs> Big numbers we're dealing with here. And then finally, we get 3 to the 0, if you like, and then 2 to the 1, 6, uh, 1, 6, 1, 2. And sure enough, I get 3 to the 403 times 2 to the 1, uh, one sorry, somebody's ringing me, uh, times 2 to the 1, 6, 1, 2. Oh, look, I forgot to add that on there. I Honestly, you don't know what it's like living in my house. I've got somebody who's in the house ringing me right now, and it's making it very stressful. Okay, so 1612 cancels with that, and sure enough, whee, you get 3 to the 2000, 2 to the 2015. Look at that, they all cancelled, and that has got a minus on it. So, no, it's not prime, <laughs> but it's damn hard to find a prime number. Now, when I looked at their solution, I realized they'd done a very similar argument, but with 3 to the 5 here and uh, uh, 2 to the 5, which is interesting because they found quite a small prime number, which is a factor of 3 to the 2015 minus 2 to the 2015. This question reminds me of the kind of Olympiad questions, and it's the reason why, if you think you shouldn't be looking at Olympiad questions when you're practicing these kind of extension papers, think again. They're a great source of questions because what they don't do is ask you tons of stuff about A-level maths. Um, it's not really on A-level, but that doesn't mean it's easy, as you can just see from that question. That wasn't really about A-level content, was it? But it was a hard question. Uh, so yeah, is, the, is it a prime number? No, because I just found a factor and it was free to the wherever it was, 3 to the 403 minus 2 to the 403. That is a factor of that. Okay, this last one. This last one's kind of cute. I particularly, after I come up with my kind of explanation, my explanation was like this. I was like, well, if it's a cube number, if this is a cube number um, and k is an integer, then I should be able to factorize it into stuff cubed, yeah? Because it's a cube number. Well, let's look for a factor there. Well, k equals minus 1. Once again, from factor theorem, you see you get minus 1, plus 2, minus 2, plus 1. Yeah, minus 1, plus 2, minus 2, plus 1. Look at that. That is actually 0. In other words, k plus 1 is a factor. So I actually factorized it into k plus 1. And it's got a very similar factorization before. You can do this without the grids. k cubed plus k squared, but I need a 2k squared, so plus k. And then it gives me a plus k, but I need 2k, but it's a plus 1. And I think that's it fully factorized. And I was just like, well... You know, it can't be a cube number because I should be able to factorize this into stuff cubed. But I can't factorize this into stuff cubed. So I knew it wasn't a cube number. Now, I could write some explanation and hope for some marks there. But in the end, I must admit, when I saw their answer, I was like, yeah, their answer is much better than mine. They, they point out, well, k cubed is obviously less than k cubed plus 2k squared plus 2k plus 1 because k is a positive integer. Yeah. And k plus 1 cubed, well, that equals k cubed plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 1. And you can use uh, binomial expansions to see that. Yeah. And as you can see, that is obviously larger than k cubed plus 2k squared plus 2k plus 1. So their argument, and it's a very powerful argument, is no, it can't be a cube number. No, it isn't a cube number. as it lies between two consecutive cubes, which is a great point. K cubed and K plus one cubed. K cubed is less than K cubed plus two K squared plus two K plus one, which is less than, sorry, yeah, uh, have I got that right where and yeah yeah I have which is less than k plus one cubed so it definitely can't be a cube number because it lies between two consecutive cubes I prefer their explanation a lot more to mine would I have been given any marks for my explanation I don't know I really don't um uh, it depends how like carefully you you know you phrase your answer and I don't think I'm brilliantly uh, awesome at uh, phrasing about <laughs> putting my maths into a language as you probably noticed on the videos but there we go that was my thoughts on that question hope you enjoyed it well done and uh, all the best in the map.